Hi, ladies. Hello, TFF and Team Resilient Spirit. It is Trina Gray, founder of Team Rockstar Fit. And I am coming to you outside in my backyard today because I wanted to talk to you about vision. And no better way to talk to you about vision and to get out of my office, away from my desk, and take you outside to my home and talk to you a little bit about this journey and some of the ups and the downs, some of the lessons I've learned along the way. First of all, I'm so proud of you for qualifying for this Diamond event. It's a really big deal. It's a really big deal to give yourself an advancement in your business, to qualify for an exclusive event, and hats off to Lauren and Mel for being the kind of leaders who offer an opportunity like this. They are role modeling really great leadership for you ladies. So if you don't know my story, I'll give you little snippets and pieces, a shorter version of it. My name is Trina Gray, and I founded this Beachbody team about 11 years ago. Now, I signed up 13 years ago, but our sign-up date isn't always really our actual start date. And if you get it, you get it. I signed up because my good friend Janelle simply asked me to. We were fellow group fitness instructors in a small town in northern Michigan called Alpena, Michigan. We met through group fitness. She signed up as a Beachbody coach. She called me one day and said, hey, there's this company called Beachbody. You know their fitness programs like Turbo Kick and Pio, which we taught at the club that we worked at. Well, they're opening their doors, she said, to people like you and me. People who like fitness are willing to help other people and want to make some money doing it. And I was washing the dishes on the phone with her. And I said, hey, that sounds great. That was it. She said, do you want to do this with me? And I said, yes, that sounds great. No big discussion needed. No big webinar. No big explanation. I'm certainly not saying that those things don't work or aren't valuable to grow a business. But I don't want you to forget the basic fundamental truth of simply asking someone that you respect and you like to do this with you. Janelle didn't overthink it because she didn't even know how to overthink it way back then. It was a simple phone call. It was, hey, this company is opening its doors. I thought of you. You like fitness. Would you like to do this with me? It was that easy, my friends. Back then, it was actually a little bit more complicated to get signed up. You had to use a fax machine. I didn't have a fax machine at home, um, but she emailed me an application. I had to print it out and fill it in. I had to uh, go into town and fax in my application. So you know what I did after that? I printed out 10 applications, and I went to a bunch of my friends in town, and I said, hey, you like fitness. You go to group fitness classes. You teach classes. You're a stay-at-home mom, maybe looking for something fun to do. And I just gave out applications. I gave out 10 applications. And I gave them a personal invite. And I told them why I thought they'd be good at it. And about two weeks later, I had about six coaches signed up. And a couple weeks after that, I had eight coaches signed up. And then not long after that, I was diamond. I hit the ground running initially. And I don't tell this story very often because I didn't have any fear of inviting. I really thought that partnering with a fitness company, getting paid to get people on workout programs, the couples that I knew, I knew Pio, I knew Turbo, I'd heard of P90X. The company had a good reputation. It wasn't expensive to join. It cost $40 to join. We had lots of great fitness programs we had access to as a coach. There didn't seem any downside. I was busier than heck running a business with two little kids, but I didn't see this as a burden. I saw this as an opportunity. That's how I started. I got to Diamond really quickly because I didn't overthink it. I knew the business was built on a team, on going someplace with other people. I knew the business was not just built on retail. Now, I knew that from the very beginning. Why? Because I took the time to look at the comp plan and to talk to my coach about it. And it was really clear that I help people get healthy and fit, but I work with friends and help them do the same thing. And as a team, we go so much farther. I'd always been in team sports. I bet many of you have too. I knew that if I were going to play a basketball game, I want to be the only one out there trying to play defense. I don't want to be the only one out there trying to score. I will play defense and I will score, but I need other people out there with me. It just seemed like such a basic concept that the team approach just really, really fit me. 
So I invited a lot. Well, what happened after that? Because I was on such a good roll. I actually won a huge prize from my sponsor. I really very rarely share this story, but she put out there that I could win a whole entire set of selectorized weights or a TV. She said the first person on my team to get to diamond. And so I was the first, I just went and did it. I didn't overthink it. I just, she said, I need eight people and a couple of them need a couple people. And I just went, that was it. Didn't overthink it because I didn't know that you needed to. Didn't focus on tons of rules and, and prices and all this packages and stuff because I just signed up people for 40 bucks as a coach and helped them get on a product. That was it. So what happens after this? Well, life gets in the way, my friends. And I know that that's where you've been, I bet. Life got in the way. I got real busy. I started to have fears. They started building. What will people think about me being in network marketing? What happens when my sister, my sister-in-law, and one of my best friends from high school all quit that first diamond team in the same couple of weeks. Well, then you start to get your spirit crushed and then you start to live in fear and you start to think everyone's judging you and you start to think that maybe you shouldn't be doing this. And then I just decided that I was too busy as a mom of little kids. I already had a business. I was already working full time. Maybe I didn't have room for this. And over the course of, I don't know, maybe 18 months, I really wavered. If you don't know my story, I went to Summit the following summer. So this is the first full year of me being a coach. I went to Summit by myself. I flew from small town Alpena, Michigan to LA, and I lasted one day. One day. I flew home on a one-way ticket from LA. I didn't feel like I fit in. I went to a party that was meant to be like a VIP party, and I didn't have on the right outfit, and I didn't know what the roped off areas meant, and I felt like a fish out of water in all seriousness, and it wasn't for me. I went to the super workout the next morning, which it, these, these days of my life, I think it's amazing and fun that thousands of people want to meet up for a workout. But I got there the next morning and people were clamoring on top of each other and pushing to try to get close to the stage. And I was like, I thought we were just here to work out. These are, in my opinion, I didn't feel like the fitness trainers were celebrities. I felt like they were fitness trainers leading a workout. And I felt like, what is everybody doing? Is is there someone famous up there that I'm missing? So I wasn't enmeshed in the world of Beachbody yet. And I didn't get that people really, really get um, connected to the trainers and fall in love with the programs. And I was just someone in the fitness industry that thought I was going to take a class. So anyway, those are all my hangups. I hope they're not yours. I went back to my hotel. I packed up my bags. I took a cab to the airport, no Ubers then. And I bought a one-way ticket back to Alpena, Michigan for over $500. And I didn't have that money. I didn't have that money. That wasn't an easy spend, but I knew I didn't want to be there anymore. I flew home and I wasn't on a good track, right? I flew home from Summit. I'm wavering. People had quit my team. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I had fears. And if you haven't heard this piece, I just got to share this piece because it, if, if hearing my failures <laughs> makes you feel more heard or seen or normal, I'm happy to pass them on to you. So sometime after that, I was um, not logging into my coach online office. Let's put it that way. I didn't know where my checks were going. I wasn't paying attention. I was the most checked out coach on the planet. Well, at the time, um, I didn't know where my checks are going. And I went six months without having a Beachbody check deposited in my account because I hadn't bothered to look that they had changed everything over to automatic. And I hadn't put in my routing and bank number. So they were just holding my checks. They weren't mailing them anymore. They went to a, you had to opt in to get a mailed and I hadn't done that. So six months later, I realized this. I, I go to log into my account. I can't get in. I don't know my password. I have to contact Beachbody to reset my password. And I get into my account and I realized I had actually accrued over a thousand dollars in retail sales and team cycle bonuses. And I was at least an emerald at that time pretty close to diamond, maybe in and out of diamond. And I, I was making money. I just didn't know it. And it, it didn't matter to me. And I was completely checked out. So those are a couple of aha moments in my life. I decided I either have to get in or get out. So in my effort to decide, I went to a very small gathering of a super Saturday, really very close to what you guys are doing with Mel and Lauren. Now there was just a handful of us, less than a dozen of us at my sponsor Janelle's house in Toledo. And we're really just eat, eating casually, sitting on the floor. 
um, she had a few local, like few presenters just talking to us about their journey. And one of the presenters was a woman by the name of Mindy Wender. Mindy Wender is a mom who lives in an even smaller town than I do, if you can imagine, way up in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And she got up there just super casual, super nice, super kind, said, hey, I'm a mom who wasn't fit. And I met Janelle on Twitter and she told me I could get paid to get fit and help other women. And I might even be able to take my family on a trip to Disney. That was her story. And that's what she wanted to do. She was working a minimum wage job at a hardware store. And she had a little boy and a lot of bills. And she thought, if I can use some fitness programs and get in shape for myself, and I can take my son to Disney someday as a mom in a low income job, I'm in. Mindy Wender ended up, as some of you may know, if you followed her journey over the years, but she's a superstar diamond coach, was one of the top earners in the company. She's gone on to have two more kids. So she's got three kids. She lives an amazing life. She has a beautiful home up in the Upper Peninsula. It all started with a Twitter message about earning some extra money in fitness, maybe taking a trip to Disney. That spoke to me. I saw Mindy at the beginning of her journey. I saw the gleam in her eyes. I saw how excited she was about the fact that she was getting fit from home and that she was just helping some other people get fit from home and she was making money. And she talked about the bills she was paying down. She talked about the uh, travel account she was setting up. And just the beginning of her story is what inspired me. We always think that we need to be inspired by the person who's already arrived. I'm not here to be the person to inspire you. I'm here to tell you, you are the person to go inspire people. Your story, the beginning of your story, the middle of your story, you on the journey is what's inspiring. That's what lit me up. The beginning of Mindy's journey. I left that super Saturday. I went home and I decided I'm in, I'm doing this. Why not me was really the words I was saying to myself. Why not me? And I started plugging in. So what did I do? I started plugging into team calls. My upline upline, Christine Dwyer ran a Thursday night call at 10 PM Eastern. I had two little kids and a full-time job and I did not see myself doing a call from 10 to 10 30 at night, but I did. I got on from the couch in our front room and I would listen in. And one week on a Thursday night call, she read bonus amounts for if you hit two star, five star, 10 star, 15 star. Now I, I was aware in the compensation plan that there were bonuses, but I had never heard what they were. And sometimes it's just the right person at the right time sharing it. And so Christine read those. And the really, really high ones just kind of freaked me out and thought, nah, I'm not that person. I, I can't work that hard. I've got two kids. I got a, a job. I don't see myself being at the top. That wasn't really on my radar in any way. But two star and five star sounded very much possible. If I love this enough, could I help two friends in my life love this? If I helped this enough and I stayed with it, could I help five friends in my life do this? And I did. Christine read that bonus amount. It was around $5,000 for five-star and it was around $800 or $1,000 for two-star. And I knew, and I knew that that would help me upgrade my vehicle. And I knew if I got a couple of those that I could take a trip to Maui, which I'd always wanted to do. Both of those things happened. Got myself to five-star, got to two-star. I pretty quickly got to five-star because once you have the fire, you just keep it going. Once you have the fire, you just keep it going. If I know how to create one diamond and I can support one woman, I can support five. Right. So got myself to five star, got those bonuses. And I remember trading in an old blazer. It had cloth seats, air conditioning didn't work. It wasn't unsafe in any way, but my kids deserve better. I deserve better. Traded my car in and I got a Durango. It wasn't a new Durango, but it was a lease and it only had 20,000 miles on it. it. had leather seats and it was so fancy to me. I loved it. And those early wins are what I hold on to. I was able to take my family, including some extended family on this trip to Maui with us because I just saved and saved and saved. My friends that those early wins, those early dreams, those early visions have propelled me over the last 10 years or more to just stay with it. So that's a lot of my story. Those are a whole bunch of lessons mixed in there. And I'll tell you kind of where I've arrived or where I've gotten to now and where that dream came from. I know that you're in 
probably outside of Madison right now at this event. So you can appreciate this um, as natives that you are. I grew up in a small town called Windsor, Lake Windsor, teeny tiny. It was um, the road that I grew up on was uh, set in between a whole bunch of cornfields, which I know now are a lot of buildings, but those cornfields are actually still there. A whole bunch of cornfields behind me. And then across the street was a Lake Windsor golf course. Right. So I used to take my bike and bike to the Lake Windsor golf course and worked in their snack shop for a couple summers. I was on a 10 speed. And so I was like, there was cornfields and there was a golf course. And I never grew up around water, near water. I know that in Madison, there's like Monona and make like the Dota. I didn't grow up there in any way. I had an uncle. I had an uncle who lived in Lake Monona in a beautiful, beautiful home. But my dad and my uncle weren't all that close. We really only saw him on the occasional holiday, usually Easter, where it's too cold to be out on the boat. I remember one Easter being at his house and looking down the bluffs and looking at the lake and seeing his dock and hoist down there and thinking, someday, someday I want to have a boat. Someday I want to live on a lake. He was an entrepreneur who owned a business. And I thought, I just want that. He always talked about traveling to Florida, going to, um, he used to go to St. Lucia, he used to go to St. Thomas, he used to go to all these exotic places. I only heard about him on occasional Christmas and Easter dinners, but I just liked that that guy had, had adventure and had um, just a lifestyle that seemed so far from my lifestyle out in the cornfields and on the golf course. And I had a great upbringing and I had a great life. And I'm not discounting that at all, but I knew at an early age that maybe I just wanted something different. So I moved to Michigan about 20 years ago, actually, um, didn't live on the lake by any means, but about three years into my coaching journey, I got a small cottage on the lake and it was my dream. And it was a teeny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny little cottage. I rented it, by the way, I didn't buy this thing. I rented it and I got a taste of what life would be like. It was a tiny little rental. It looked more like a shack. It looked more like the garage next to a nice home, but it was golden to me. It was golden to my family. It was golden to my kids. I loved it. I felt in my element there. I felt happy there. I felt disconnected there. And I knew I was on the right path. So I made a goal to get a cottage on the lake. And two years later, we bought an actual real two-story cottage, big deck cottage on the lake. And about two or three years after that, we bought a home on the lake. And that's been my journey. And this is Friday evening that I'm filming this for you, about six o'clock at night over here, 6.45 at night. I wondered why I was getting hungry. And I just went over to the marina, got my pontoon boat, put it in the water before the Zoom because I wanted to have it here for you. And I wanted you to see that that was my dream. Pontoon boat, on the lake, paddle boards, my kids, my family, working hard, but enjoying a dream. This is all possible because I said yes to Team Beachbody. I said yes to myself and I said yes to my future. Now, as you know, Beachbody doesn't guarantee any financial success. It's really up to your own skill and diligence. But have you seen the earnings reports that came out recently? Do you know what's possible to earn as a coach? And I will finish with some of this. They just came out with this. I want you to know that the average earnings of a diamond coach, the average earnings of a diamond coach is $18,000. That's you simply deciding that I'm going to invite some friends and family to do this with me, to get in shape, and pay to help other people. Now, some of those might be preferred customers and some of those might be coaches. The more coaches, the better, because coaches can produce volume. Coaches can add to the team. So when in doubt, you might start somebody as a preferred customer to get them in your community, but when in doubt, build with coaches, okay? $18,000 is the average income of a diamond, the high income of a diamond. So this would be a diamond with a lot of growth in their downline, a lot of activity in their downline. The high income for a diamond is $161,000, okay? So in my opinion, this is a diamond who has grown a lot of people in their downline, um, but is more an unusual situation to earn that much at that rank. Star Diamond is where things open up. You have passed on your, some skills, some leadership, some passion, some light to other people. The average earnings of a Star Diamond is $120,000. Now that Star Diamond includes one Star Diamonds all the way to 15 Star Diamonds. 
So the high end of that is $2.8 million. The highest earning coaches in Team Beachbody are earning $2.8 million a year with the average star diamond earning 119, 120. Now, none of those numbers are anything to shake a stick at. That's like an old phrase of my dad. All those numbers are game changing. Whether you're talking about six figures or seven figures or multiple seven figures, come on. Those are legitimate numbers. Those are legitimate numbers. That doesn't mean you toiling away in a nine to five job, hoping for a 3% raise for the next 50 years. That is you saying, I have a dream for my life. Whether it's you want to go to Disney or you want to have a cottage or you want to pay off debt or you want to set up savings or you want to take great family vacations or you want a new car or whatever it is that lights you up, can you figure it out? Figure out what lights you up and go create it. No one told me that I should desire a house on the lake. I didn't grow up on the lake. I told you my only sliver of experience on the lake was seeing an uncle. Right? But I just knew that it seemed calm and happy and peaceful and that I liked this idea for myself. Whatever that is for you, you've got to have some kind of dream that's going to make you do this work. And if I could offer you some advice in this business, please encourage people to be a coach like you are. Maybe they need to get started on their own fitness journey first as a customer. Maybe they need to tap their, get their toes in the water and experience your community as a preferred customer, but come on. We know that people get longer-term results, the ability to help others, the ability to earn income for the same exact fee. The only difference is you believing in them and they believing in them, them believing in them, whatever that English is supposed to be, right? My friends, that's what I have for you today. I hope I didn't go into, into too much overtime. Lauren and Mel, I have vision. I'm passing my vision onto you. The early wins are what's going to give you momentum. The business is not easy, but you've done much, much harder things in life. Being in a relationship, going to college, having kids. Are you kidding me? That's so much more complicated than running a fitness business. But the fitness business can make the rest of your life better. You can remove the worry of finances. You can take great vacations. You can live where you want. Dive into this business. Add to your community with as many coaches as possible. I know that's what got me off to a good start in this business. And that's what I've always stuck with is growing a team. I wish you the best. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope this audio turned out and be so disappointed if it doesn't. Message me and tell me what you learned from me or how you're feeling right now. And I wish you ladies all the best.